Yes, ma'am. Okay, so yesterday uh, we had seen that what are different ways for uh, what is data mining is basically a building model and we had seen how it can be applied to a simple application, maybe a web application or uh, business intelligence and how a machine learning uh, person have a look at it and so on. So for that we have given uh, uh, the data mining can also be applied to healthcare domain. Okay, so if you are trying to uh, uh, study a particular disease, okay, then uh, we can have the name of a person, the age of the person, uh, um, uh, the locality where he or she lives and his uh, regular habits and all those features can be stored and they can try to find out what are the uh, characteristics that a person will have or uh, so that he get that disease, okay. No, so, uh, so uh, they can try to give some solution to the disease and all that. So in medical domain also data mining can be applied. Um, so everywhere we have seen that uh, we get a raw form of a data and uh, we have to pre-process the data and also the post-processing is required. So till now actually what we had seen only by uh, so theoretical okay so uh, right now actually today what i have done i have prepared some four or five slides where you can see an example for each of the technique like data mining techniques like classification clustering then uh, uh, um, association mining and all those we will see them okay, with example so <clears throat> So as already uh, told, so in uh, data mining, so in relational model, maybe you have seen only two dimensional data, but when it goes to multi-dimensional data, we have a lot of data, right? The size of the data is also big. Uh, that is the number of instances are also big and each instance having the features or characteristics, they are also big. And not only that, but the type of data that are available, um, they are also different. Okay, that also we will see. So basically they have uh, tried to put here that data to be mined. So what different types of data uh, one can mine. So you can have, uh, you have seen relational model. Like, so like uh, we also have the extended relational model with a few of the additional features. Uh, then when you apply the object oriented uh, concept to the relational model, you have object oriented databases. Uh, heterogeneous uh, or legacy system. So legacy systems are some of the old system which will uh, this may, maybe a company will have some legacy system, maybe using file system or something and have the data uh, stored in the files. But now the company decides that they have to go for the uh, relational model and all. So but they cannot afford to convert all the data that is available in the older system into the new system. So so uh, it can happen that uh, if you have to do the analysis, the analysis should be done partly on the newly data that is available in the relational model and partly on the older system, which is uh, uh, already available. So there are, uh, those type of data can also mined. So, or we have basically in the KDD diagram, we have seen we have data warehouses where we integrate the data from multiple sources. We keep them in a single place and we will be applying data mining on it. Um, so, or we can have transactional databases. So, transactional databases example is the shopping mall, a customer purchasing things. So, we will see an example. I have our other slides. After going through a few of these slides, I will share those slides. So, stream data, I am also that I told you it's continuously coming, right? Or the network packets in the uh, uh, internet, like the packets that are moving, though that is streaming data that is continuously flowing. Then you have spatial temporal data. Like, um, so for stream data, actually, you can also take an example of a stock market, actually. So it's a temporal data, what you called it. So as the time uh, changes, the price of the stock also changes and it is continuously changing, right? So when your stock market is closed, obviously it will not, but data is continuously coming. So it is uh, the packets that are moving through the internet is also the example of a stream data. So, um, uh, or the uh, time series data, 
the time series data the stock market example spatial temporal data is something which changes with the space and time so the better example you can take is the weather so um, so whether uh, whether it suppose the locality what we say shivaji nagar so at a particular uh, at shivaji nagar is a space and at a particular time it will have some temperature so as the space and the time changes the temperature is also going to change so uh, the areas that are uh, nearby shivaji nagar will more or less have similar temperature but if we compare uh, shivaji nagar to mumbai they will have a lot of different difference in temperature so the data that changes with space and time is called as a special temporal the best example is if, uh, if you are trying to predict the weather for the whole world that's the best example that you find um, then the sequence data is something like uh, uh, like Mm, you have a dna sequence right so if you uh, you have to find if you get some sample and you have to match you have to find out that the sample is of whom in forensic lab also what they do they try to match the sequence and try to find out the sequence belong to so the one of the biological uh, field is one of the uh, field where you can apply data mining so that's a sequence data okay uh, text and web uh, uh, so the data that is available on the internet that a multimedia database audio videos whatever available uh, so like you have image processing and all those things right or uh, um, so the they will uh, like i told you uh, example i remember that uh, you will try to study the uh, sea ground and you try to predict whether uh, is there any issue the tsunami is now are going to come or not okay so you are trying to uh, study the images and you are trying to predict whether it is uh, harmful or not so that precaution can be taken so it ca can be also be applied to the graphs uh, so graph like we have uh, uh, today we have uh, people are connected uh, like via various uh, social networking sites right? you have friends on facebook on linkedin and all those things the people are connected so data mining can also be applied to it so one of the very common example you can see that they try to find out see when a person is writing the paper no? so when you go to the final year you do carry out some your final year project um, uh, i am audible right i just wanted to confirm Yes, yes 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 okay um okay so um uh when you go to the btech i was saying you'll carry out some project and if you are interested you can publish your paper so that it uh, <clears throat> okay it is available online if, if it's a good work you get good result you will publish it and you will make it uh, open okay so like uh, you will work in some particular domain like maybe data analytics or uh, cloud computing or something like that. so if you are working in cloud computing okay you will write a paper you will in references you will uh, put all the papers that you have referred and all those things so uh, so maybe 15 references you put in your paper uh, you, you you did some uh, some related work in com cloud computing there is another group who is also doing a similar work in cloud computing so they may also have 20 references so if your work is similar if your work of the both the group is similar you may have the few of the references common in them right so so they have applied uh, data mining in uh, this also so like uh, the paper is represented as a node the references are there and so the uh, so the both the paper will have a common reference na? so it, you can find out that the, both the paper are re related to each other so if a third person if a third person Uh, who is working on the similar uh, domain no they can uh, give him recommend that okay if you are carrying out this work this paper might be useful to you 
so such this is a one of the example but there are many uh, so this uh, the graph network can also be mined to find out the terrorist attack and all those uh, so the, how the people will contact to each other now earlier we had uh, telephones and all but now very common is that they interact with social network so they they will try to find out whether is there a, a unusual activity and so it, they will try to find out which people are connected and if one person is um problematic uh, to whom he, he all is connected so the other may also be problematic so it will help them to find out so in those areas so graphs and all um, uh, you can apply data mining okay so there are various uh, types of data so these are what different types of data okay to which we uh, data mining can be applied and there are various data mining tasks actually what you can carry out on the data that is mentioned above okay so um, so characterization discrimination these are also few of the task but uh, um, so uh, we will study them as we move on so association classification clustering i already gave you an example na? so what i will right now do is i will just uh, um, stop this and i will try to tell you that uh, uh, i will complete this slide okay because i have put first slide for the olap actually um so so association classification clustering trend finding or uh, trend going that is deviation outlier analysis these are all data mining task which can be applied to the data that is mentioned above the data mining task can be descriptive or predictive so in predictive you are trying to predict like the uh, class of a instance or you are trying to predict the price of a um, stock and so on in descriptive the example is like clustering where uh, you the uh, the uh, information of the instance or the details of the uh, uh, objects are not known but you are trying to study the characteristics so it's a descriptive so the task can be descriptive or predictive uh, okay so uh, or you can ca carry it those task at single level or you can carry it at multiple level also okay so uh, so uh, what techniques you will be using so olap is one of the technique you can use the machine learning statistic pattern recognition um, then visualization so whatever result you get after mining you will try to draw the graphs and charts and you will try to study the result and then come up with some conclusion so that data is very huge you can go for high uh, high performance computing okay and parallel and all those things will be required so the data warehouse uh so data on if you have a like we have seen databases right so in databases what operations do you apply it's online transaction processing right what are databases like i told you the banking example what we have seen in relational model uh, it is called as oltp it is online transaction processing system so uh, uh, maybe an uh, sbi bank having its uh, um, branches and each of them but the main server is same the data will be stored at this main server and so on so you can do what uh, type of operations you already know study and add modify delete display and so on but when you go to the data warehouses you have very less of add modify del uh, delete and display type of operations but you are trying to gather the data and analyze the data so it is called as online analytical processing so i also told you that in data warehouses you told uh, specifically store the multi dimensional data hmm? uh, like i gave you the example yesterday uh, and uh, applications where you can apply the data mining is the retail or telecommunication banking fraud analysis these all examples we have been seeing right um, so in retail like if i told you that if a person is going to buy this what uh, what are the chances that he is going to buy another item in telecommunication you can try to find out okay some group of people which who uh, talks in very odd hours maybe a night hours mostly when people are sleeping the uh, there may be few people who will be working so if the uh, telecommunication company is giving some offer that if you have a make a call between 11 to 5 your charges will be 50% less or so on so they have to find out that who are the customer who, uh, who are their customer to whom if they give this offer they may accept it so they have to study similarity of this customer so yeah, so there are various uh, uh, domain where you can apply this data mining task 
so just let me stop here and can you see the another slides Uh, it will be good if you uh, speak now because uh, uh, if you are giving your thumbs up i have to come to the screen and check okay so here this i have tried to put the example that i gave you yesterday right uh, multi dimensional data so here is the cube here is the cube actually where you have three dimensions so one axis representing time another axis representing cities and another axis representing the product Okay, so in cubical format, the data is stored. This is the location or cities. What you can see, these are the products, and this is the time. Okay, now I told you that if you remember the diagram of KDD, you integrate the data, you clean the data, okay, uh, then you put it into warehouse, then you do a selection task. If you remember, we do a selection task, and on the selected data, we do the data mining. So, okay, if you what uh, they have done here, they have done. So, this is oh, if you go to the OLAP, the different type of operation you can do is like you can do slicing, dicing, uh, drill up, uh, roll up, drill up, or uh, uh, drill down and drill up. So, in slicing, you can see. So, they have applied slicing over here. This is the actual data. So, I told you that at a particular location, the particular product and a particular time. How much sales were made? Sales was made, or what price was there? Whatever it is. Okay, so at the center junction, you have the value of your interest. So now, if the person want to analyze the rate of only two thousand four, so whole cube is representing for two four five six. So they will apply the slicing, and they will get only this front slice. You can see the slicing operation is done over here, and they got only the data for two thousand year. 2004 year this is a slicing operation and this is called as a dicing if you go to this uh, lower example it's a dicing operation so you take some selected uh, uh, so they have taken few selected equipments so they have taken only accessories outdoor equipments and the golf equipment for all the three years and they are trying to analyze it they are not interested for mountaineering equipment and camping equ equipment So maybe camping and mountaineering equipment, they are not interested right now. They want to analyze only this data. So uh, they will accordingly uh, do the operation, dicing operation, and they will get this middle cube and do the analysis. Okay, so this is uh, this is slicing, this is dicing, and uh, here they have done as a uh, drill down. You can see. drill down so in outdoor equipments you can see they have highlighted this blue section and this blue section is this so all the product that belongs to outdoor protective equipments may be insect repellent or sunblock or first aid okay so these are the, they all are coming under into this category now they want to analyze this outdoor product equipment in more detail so they have to the data is already there but so you have to go more inside and get the details of the data so this was the total sales 3 the uh, 329 they are seeing the slides only the, the uh, main split is over here it is given so you drill down if you from this you uh, go to this it's called as a roll up so if you drill down you will try to get the final level details if you move up you will get the abstract level or the summary level so um, and this is another operation that you can carry out actually in ola that is uh, pivoting so pivoting is nothing but you are trying to view the same data from di different angle actually different um, angle okay so just restructuring the data that is available so you can see they have just changed the view and so this is for olap and uh, i have been telling you that uh, uh, the market basket analysis no so this is an a few examples of association uh, uh, mining actually so like the instances in association Hello. mining they will be like the first person maybe purchased uh, the bread and the milk the second person purchased bread diaper beer eggs and so on so you can see each transaction have a unique uh, transaction id and items contains a list of 
items that are purchased from the um, purchased by the customer so this this is a very short example but uh, you can uh, yourself imagine that it is not the list will be also big and the number of customers will also be big so you have to mine those all transactions so these are um, each each one is a sample okay so first instance second three four five so you have five instances actually so for from this actually you have to come up with rules something like this okay how and all that we will see when we study the association analysis but just to make your idea clear i thought i will tell you so if a person is so this rule says if a person is going to buy milk and diaper uh, he is also going to buy deer uh, sorry beer so s and c are the support and confidence this is a rule actually this is a rule and uh, the rule is being what is the support for this rule and what is the confidence of this rule how to find out its support and confidence that also we will see um, okay so we are interested in uh, all the rules which are about some given uh, above support threshold and you will also have a threshold for confidence so if the rule is having the support and confidence about the threshold that then we are interested in so if uh, yeah, if uh, like uh, what i can say mm. Mm. so if uh, like a person is going to buy a, a doorbell huh? and then he is also going to buy a pillow okay what i am saying is if a person is going to buy a doorbell he is also going to buy a pillow so this is not a very common uh, set of mind. items that a person will have you know, in, in it's, a, uh, it's a very uh, most of the people will not buy it together some may need doorbell some may need pillow but the people who are in need of a doorbell and uh, pillow is by chance okay so keeping a doorbell and the pillow not audible hello kewa pasun he he kela pasna ka ma'am we okay. can see only the slide 13 hmm avastha nahi ana wala bara theek hai ah ata dishte ata change hota hai thoti inme the slides change kele पण मला आवाज नाही येत आहे पण बोल आय ऐकणं येतो ऐकू येत होत ना बर ठीक आहे मला वाटत बहुतेक हे प्रेस झालं होत एक मिनिट ठीक आहे नाव आर द स्लाइड चेंजिंग नो मॅम Slides are not yet changing. Mm. Just a minute. Huh? Upload pending. Why it is showing me upload pending? now can you see the slides now are the slides visible no ma'am no now no ma'am yes ma'am it's visible yes. now. okay so your uh, your uh, your screen was stuck in 13 slide only yes ma'am 
I think so. When I changed it, it could not. Uh, I don't know. Something problem happened. So. Um, so this is what i will just uh, quickly go through it so this is what the same example that i gave you you know last time uh, uh, multi dimensional data okay so you have three dimensions over here product cities and time okay so uh, this is actual data at a junction you will have the sales value or what price the equipment for stored this equipment and what location and during what time what was the price or how much sales was made and so on it can be anything the junction can be as per uh, the uh, interest of the uh, user uh, so <clears throat> so like uh, i told you that uh, if you are going to olap online analytical processing you will have large amount of data and you will have some tools using which you will be analyzing the data so different sort of operations you can done uh, you can do like they have given example here slicing okay if you have a look at this cube you have various locations you have various equipments and for various years what were uh, mil, uh, how much sales for me was made but if a person is trying to analyze only the data for 2004 year then he will have to apply the size slicing operation on the time time okay so this is called as a slicing operation and this is the dicing operation so where he is interested for all the years 2004 5 6 but not for all the equipments but he is interested in some selected category of equipments so he is interested only in the uh, accessories, outdoor protective equipment, and the golf equipment. So if I apply the dicing on this, so I will, uh, so I will have to give the requirement parameters and all, and I can get this middle part. This middle part from here, I will get it over here, and the analysis will be done. Okay, so this is the what selection operation. What I'm trying to tell you from that KDD diagram, you get the data from the data warehouse. You apply the selection on it, and then you mine the data. So this is the uh, interested data. This has to be mined. This is the interested data. This has to be mined. So selection, slicing, dicing. You also have the uh, drill down. If you go from here to here, it is drill down. Or if you uh, go from here to here, it is drill up. So when you drill down the data, you get finer level details. In outdoor protective equipment, you have in, uh, insect repellent, sunblock, and first aid. So, um, so those finer level details you will get. So you can drill down the data or drill up the, or roll up also they call this, roll up the data. Okay, and this is the example for the pivoting of a data. You have one of the operation which you can do in OLAP. So pivoting is nothing but just rearranging the data to look at it from different angle. So you can see here they have just changed the angle. So the year have come over here and so on. So it's just rearranging of existing data. So these, uh, this is the uh, example of multidimensional data that I thought I will give you. Uh, slides are changing, right? You can see the pivoting slides. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So now um, uh, this is an example of the association mining. So you can see this list of transactions that are done at a particular shopping mall or something is given to you. Each, uh, each instance is having unique ID that is transaction ID and each transaction will have a list of items that are purchased by the customer. And you will have large amount of data and you have to come up with some rules like this. So if a person is going to buy milk and diaper, he is going to buy beer. This is supported by 0.4. Uh, support for this rule is 0.4 and confidence is 0.67. So we are interested to mine all the rules uh, who are above given support threshold and confidence threshold. Not all rules are interesting because I already gave you an example, the person buying a doorbell, uh, there is a very less chance that he is also going to buy the pillow. Okay, we are interested 
to mine the frequent item that if he is going to buy this he is also going to buy this and support and confidence for this rule is more okay so how to find support and confidence we will see so we are interested in finding patterns like this so it tells you that how the items are associated with each other so uh, sharing all this just to make your idea clear actually okay so it, it will get more clear when we study each and everything in detail but just as introductory so yesterday i also told you that uh, so uh, the uh, classifiers no there are various type of rule based classifier or decision uh, or tree based classifier no so the, how do, do they represent that knowledge using this rule uh, rules like this or a tree like this so I, i was trying to tell you this example like this yesterday so this is a training data that is given to you okay so um so this will be done maybe like this. what example is the banking uh, so the bank have to the people will come and apply for loan right the bank is not going to give the loan to everyone and also uh, it will also check that if a loan has to be given or not and if it has to be given they have to find it for what amount he is eligible he or she so if they will try to find out what their income is and how much property he have and so on so just they have tried to give you a simple example um, so this is a very short example again you will have number of instances plus the number of characteristics for the in, uh, instance will also be uh, more uh, but just to make the idea clear suppose the bank is trying to analyze uh, id home owner means uh, do he have his own or home or not marital status what is his annual income and wh whether he is a defaulted borrower or not so the bank have to make the decision that whether he ha he ha they have to give a loan or not so they will try to build from all the history to the people to whom they have given the loan they will try to build then the you will give them algorithm this data as an input and that algorithm will try to build its knowledge like this so okay so what he is he, looking at this you can see this is home owner is the attribute that is chosen by the classifier to spread the data okay so all the instances which are uh, having yes so home owner can have how uh, what uh, input uh, value associated with it can have yes or no so they are saying that if home owner yes he will come to this side and if home owner is no he will go to this side okay so um, so one the first fourth and seventh instance will lie on this branch and the remaining all will come on this branch okay so you can see if if, if its home owner is yes is defaulted borrower no if home owner is yes defaulted borrower is no home owner is yes defaulted borrower is no all the instances are having class no so the class is no over here okay if it's no you can have few records having no over here but you can also have a yes record having no over here means you cannot correctly say whether the defaulted borrower is no or yes so you need more splitting over here so how and all that is just put it aside right now okay so um, the, then uh, all the instances which are having no over here it have to go for the marital status that is the next attribute so here they have combined uh, single and divorced will come to this branch and if it's married he will go to this branch and so on so in this way uh, the uh, algorithm will try to build its knowledge okay and if a uh, uh, in future if some person comes they will try to get all these characteristic and they will try to pass it through this and they will try to find out whether the loan has to be given or not that is the ultimate aim Okay, so this is what one of the way to represent the knowledge. That's what I wanted to tell you. Okay, I hope your idea will get clear. <coughs> uh, and now again, can you see the next slide clustering? I'm just trying to confirm it time to time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. <coughs> this this right side example actually <coughs> I have put it in slides yesterday also. 
<laughs> but as i went through it i remembered that i did not talk about it <laughs> anyway so i have put uh, put it again so this is the clustering uh, so few data mining tasks okay what we are seeing the clustering classification association mining few of the data mining task um, so now in clustering what they are trying to do is uh, so simply what they have done is they have tried to put the instances in the sample space and uh, to, if the uh, samples are very close to each other means what they are very similar to each other so this is one cluster this is another cluster and this is another cluster the samples which are very close to each other they are alike they are similar to each other and the samples who are far from each other they are very dissimilar to each other so the ultimate aim is to so intra cluster distance are minimized so distance between two instances in a cluster are minimum but the distance between the clusters of different uh, distance between the uh, points of different clusters is more is maximized okay the ultimate is you have to find this cluster so one of the example actually they have given in uh, the other book is the mining of massive data sets what they have tried to put it in uh, uh, very olden days they had the person uh, there was some physician or statistician i don't remember uh, he have applied this uh, clustering over uh, in so uh, they are saying that in london sometimes there was a very uh, some cholera disease was uh, is like we have covid over here right everywhere obviously so that time in few uh, old days there was uh, a lot of uh, uh, cholera was uh, there so there was some um, physician or statistician who tried to study it and then what he did is he tried to uh, get the map of uh, london no? and he got this is a road map and he tried to study this from where the infected people are coming he he yeah, then he he found out so all the peoples are um, they these are the particular area from where the infected people were coming and then it was found that the uh, due to some leakage or something the wells so in this particular area were uh, they had um, the contaminated water and because of for the people living in this particular area got the disease so this is one of the clustering example what they have you can see that they are all lying in a particular cluster right so this was they give as introduction so you try to find out clusters that how the data is spread and all okay so i also told you that uh, <clears throat> uh, example of that paper publication and all they try to find the clusters so if the two people are find uh, belonging to the same cluster they are similar to each other but uh, in social network obviously you have an um, link from one uh, instance over here to one instance over here also this is your school friend or this is your college friend but few links going from school to college friends and so on so basically you apply the this is a concept of clustering okay and how to apply it and all to the given data set that we will see okay so and outlier analysis again a part of the clustering only you will try to find out cluster over here he is trying to find out the cluster but there are some samples over here so this is uh, very different from other other like so that is an outlier that i told you that the fraud transaction may be um, it will have a very different characteristics no? so will not lie in the uh, near by to the normal samples very different from it will have some unusual activity so these are the uh, examples i think so yes let me stop share and i end go back to the other slides <clears throat> we do not have time as such no can you see the original slides yes ma'am yes um so these all examples actually we uh, actually we saw right the classification clustering outlier analysis olap operations few i tried to give you the examples and what kind of a data can be mined so this is same thing again what actually i told you again that relational database or data warehouse or the transactional database 
you have data stream or sensor data time series data example is a stock market uh, um, then uh, so you have the sequence data uh, uh, structure data graph social network these all i talked about right nothing to tell you special data spatial temporal also i told you so these all kind of data data mining can be applied to this and the slides actually i had prepared for this uh, again they are telling the same thing that data cleaning uh data cleaning transformation these example na no, data cleaning transformation and all example normalization and all those example we will see when we study the pre processing data in detail over there then if you have data cube you can use olap okay uh you will try to study the characteristics and all this we will see as we go on uh, this i already told you the association mining i told you no this uh, Uh, what items you are what item per person is going to which are the frequently purchased items so they have given you a rule i actually i, I have i have explained you in that another slide so we are interested only the rules which are having the support and confidence above the given threshold okay, so this is also done classification i also told you the example they have given different ways so i told you that you have a rule based classifier you have decision tree classifier navier's best classifier using probability svm these are different type of classifiers okay uh, what we will be having look maximum we can have a look at the de decision tree only we don't have much time uh, different domains where those application can be uh, applied fraud detection i told you direct marketing i told you that which customers are to be targeted okay if you want to uh, classify the stars if you are interested in particular if we normally know only stars but in stars also there are different type of or categories of stars right so classifying the uh, star in the respective categories there also we can apply data mining and all those things okay. clustering analysis uh the main difference between the classification uh, and the clustering is uh classification is supervised uh, uh, technique so in supervised technique the main uh, like you already know the classes okay like uh, um uh, it's a uh, normal transaction or it's a fraud transaction the classes are fixed so it's a supervised but in clustering it is not so the classes are not known so like you may be given some images okay you may be given some images uh the images may have few of the images of cats few of the dog and few of the animals but you don't know prior that the images belong to the cats dogs and horses the algorithm should go through all the images it have to build a knowledge so all the images of all the cats will have similar characteristics dogs will have some similar characteristics and horses will have some similar characteristics so the classes are not unknown but it have to learn the features or the characteristics and it have to group it have to bring all the images of cats in one category all the images of dogs in one category and all the images of horse in one category so it's unsupervised learning so the class labels is unknown you don't know the classes so that's the major difference between classification and clustering and uh, so maximizing inter class similarity and minimizing inter class similarity so items belonging to the same cluster are similar to each other and uh, uh, so in classification actually one thing is that you can classify only something what is known if something is not known you cannot classify it but that can be done in clustering so group data to form a new categories if something is unknown they can be their category their features can be studied and then the objects coming uh, of those category can be put into that respective categories if if its knowledge is not there prior uh, if if you remember the data uh, a decision tree 
decision tree example uh, that was a training data the algorithm will build its knowledge from the training data if and if you had a look at the training data it have only two classes yes and no it does not have any the uh, any other class like abc if any other class is there abc the classifier will not be able to classify it but that doesn't happen in clustering so the outlier analysis also uh, uh, i'll told you and this is a sequential pattern actually that we will study next time because okay if you have any doubts right now we can take it or else we can stop Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Ah uh, yes. Ah, uh, could you please share the PPTs? The PPTs are available online. You can uh, search for Han Camber slides, third edition, and the book is also available online. Okay. Ah, uh, if you go and search for Han Camber third edition slides, you will get them. okay we will stop and we'll continue tomorrow